Good morning. It's been a few days since I've been on here. Been a lot going on, as many of you may know. I want to thank all of you who've reached out and sent your condolences on the, the loss of my mother. Um, I enjoyed sharing a cup of coffee with her and being able to get with you this morning and be able to hear with all the wonderful things that everyone has said about her and remembering her life. It gives me a chance to share that moment with y'all here. Mm. Good stuff there this morning. Well, Connex Coffee, my friend Billy Hours is placed down there. Thank you, Billy, for the coffee. It's always great. So I got good coffee, now I need a good word. What's the good word for this morning? Good word for this morning is I went to 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verses 5-7. through 7. And Paul says, After all, who is Apollos? Who is Paul? We are only God's servants through whom you believe the good news. Each of us did the work the Lord gave us. I planted the seed in your hearts, and Apollos watered. But it was God who made it grow. It's not important who does the planting or who does the watering. What's important is that God makes the seed grow. I begin to look in there and Paul planted and Apollos watered. And he's specifically looking in there on the fact that they were ministering there in those communities. And they were giving the word of God out and they were proclaiming the word of God. And then I wanted to see exactly what was happening. So I went to Acts chapter 16, 5. And the verse there said, The churches were strengthened in the faith and grew daily in numbers. I said, well, how did they get there? I went back to Acts chapter 2, verse 46 through 47. And day by day, attending the temple together and breaking bread in their homes, they received their food with glad and generous hearts, praising God and having favor with all the people. And the Lord added to their number day by day those who were being saved. So when we see that something grows and something improves and gets better with age, just like we see here that the church was growing, I began to think and it made me look back to the life that my mother gave me and what she planted into me. And we were, she was always a strong, godly woman, and everything about Christ was first and foremost in our home growing up. Everything that I had on TV, everything that was on the radio, everything that I had to read was all things that poured into my life a life of Christ and I'm always thankful for that because other people came along behind and were able to to water that and it says and to be able to see it to be able to grow I'm not what I was whenever mom passed away we were probably less than a mile from where me and mom were together when I entered the world I entered the world at the charity hospital over there and she left the world here at Rapides General right across the the river there but the thing I wanted to look at was the fact that I'm not what I was. I grew. I became something different. I believe I became something better. At least I became something that's much more operational or much more of use than a, than a small infant child is. It's the same way with us in our walk with Christ. We should be able to grow. We should be able to expand on everything in our lives. I read something this morning that said what we should fear is that next year we are exactly as we are today. And then we have not grown. And I, I liked that. Because I began to reflect back. You know, it's coming up on one year to be there at Lone Pine. And I'm finished, I don't know, four or five years there in Marksville. And, and to see how we've grown. And I, I began to look at what's the thing that we really need to make sure of. We need to make sure that we have planted a good seed. And that's the word of God. And that we have watered that. Which means we have tended to the things that God has put into our care. And that's how we see growth. I think it's for a time for us to begin to focus on that, to see how we have grown, grown individually and grown in the church. And yes, I think numbers do matter. You know, I think it's Rick Warren said numbers matter because numbers represent souls for Christ. And I think that's important. We need to see our churches grow. We need to see our churches grow, not in the fact that we have stolen people from other churches, but that we have ushered new people into the kingdom of God. I think that's important to see that. And I want us to start focusing on that, that growth. I'm, I'm calling here at the first of the year a, a 21 day fast. Now I'm not asking that you don't that you go 21 days without, but I want you to pray and say what God tells you to do in that line as to what to give up. I'm I'm looking at at giving up um, morning, noon meals, and breaking the fast at the end of the day. Kind of like it said here, the fact that they came together every day. And they came together and they broke bread in their homes. They received food with gladness, generous heart. They praised God. 
I want to do that. I want to close out my day. That's how I want to look to do. I want to close out the day and breaking the fast and going into the Word of God and sharing. So I may be doing some of these toward the end of the day instead of the morning. But that's what I want us to do for 21 days, starting on the 1st. I want us to look at a, a, go, a day, those days we can set aside and focus on the things of God. Because there's so many other things that usually distract us. And I want us to see and become truly intentional on the growth of the church by growth of those in the church, that we would make disciples, that we would grow those who are already in the church, but then we would also grow the kingdom of God by growing those who are not so far inside that the arm, the covering, the protection of Christ's blood. I think there's a lot of things that we need to be able to focus on going into this new year, and I want to go into it with a year of clarity, and I think a 21-day fast will help us with that. So I want to see if you want to participate with that. Now, I will be drinking my coffee. That's, I will. I'm just going to, for full disclosure, if you see me in the mornings drinking coffee, that's what I'm doing. I'm not eating in the mornings, but I will be drinking my coffee. And speaking of coffee, too, um, you know, I had a little contest going. I'm still monitoring, and I'm giving away free bags of coffee to those who are sharing this. And, you know, here, right here. Actually, bag. This is a bag of a uh, Southern Roots coffee. This is their 120 blend, and Mr. Mike Robertson, and a friend for many, many years, Mr. Mike. This is for you. I'm gonna get that to you. I'm not gonna mail it to you. I wanna I wanna bring it to you. I wanna share a cup of coffee with you and Miss Rosanna. So, Mr. Mike, there's your your coffee, and we're gonna be doing one every few days over the next few weeks for those who are sharing these. And it's not to share for my ego. It's just to share to get the word of God out there. I'm going to share the Word of God and share good coffee, actually. <laughs> I want to pray for you all this morning. Lord God, I'm so thankful that you've allowed me to be able to come into this group of friends, Father God, that we can visit here in this, this media. Lord God, that we can share a cup of coffee and share the Word of God in this manner. I pray, Father, that you pour out upon them in this year to come blessings. Lord God, let us see health and growth in this year to come. Let us, Father God, focus upon you and your word. Dear Lord, I lift up all of those who have lost this year, experienced loss. I pray, Father, that you will pour out your blessings upon them and give them the hope and promise of a blessed new year. All these things I ask in Jesus' name. All right, look, you know God loves you. I hope you never forget that I love y'all too, and y'all have a great day.